I already told Kenny this morning we can title today's message, uh, Reflect His Light, His Glory. That'd be number three, okay? So, has anybody, <clears throat> does anybody remember uh, the story that I told everybody three weeks ago about the moon? Does anybody remember that? Some of you weren't here, okay? Uh, I woke up, was in the mountains, I'll just recap real briefly, I woke up in the mountains uh, early in the morning and it was light outside my cabin window and there's no light up there, okay, I mean, when, it, when it's dark in the mountains, it's dark and uh, so I see this, the light coming in my window, I'm like, what is going on, I must have left the porch light on, okay. And I got up and I knew I didn't, but I went and checked and I walked out and the brightness of the moon had just lit up everything around the cabin. And as I stood there looking at the moon, it was a full moon, it was so bright, and I just started praying and worshiping God and thanking Him for His beautiful creation. And He spoke to my heart and said, the moon is reflecting the glory of the sun and that's what you as my children need to do. You need to reflect the glory of Jesus my son. Amen. So we've been talking about reflecting his glory. Hallelujah. So does anybody remember that? Yes. Does anybody want to reflect his glory? Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Isaac <clears throat> has the scriptures ready for us, although I threw two at him at the last minute. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah 1 5. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 1 5. Hallelujah. <clears throat> oh, there you go. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a spokesman to the world. Hallelujah. Oh, sovereign Lord, I said I can't speak for you. I'm too young. You know, uh, we can go to Psalms now, uh, Isaac. I caught a little bit of Robert Hill's Sunday School lesson this morning. If you missed it, you missed it, okay? I'm telling you, we have good classes on Sunday morning. You need to come and let the Word of God be taught into you, amen? Be, receive what the Lord has for you. One of the statements I heard him make was, the only thing that's stopping you from doing something for, for God is you. Amen. The only thing that's stopping us is us. You know what? When Jesus was crucified, when he went into the grave, and when he was resurrected, he killed the power of the devil. Amen. You know? He spoiled all the principalities and powers. Amen. And then he went to heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and the Word tells us through the Apostle Paul that we are seated in a position of authority with Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. We are his body, he is the head, we are his body, we are his hands, his feet, his fingers, his ears, his eyes, or eyes, ears, eyes. his feet, his legs. We're the body in the earth. He's the head that gives us direction, but we are the ones that are doing for Him what He's called us to do, His body. Amen. To bring in the fullness of everyone that's going to receive Him. Amen. You are important. I am important. We are important to the kingdom of God. Amen. There's no child of God that is more important than another child of God. I got great legs. Okay? So I'm telling you, I got great legs. Okay? I'm not going to show you many bases. Please don't show me. I got great legs, but you know what? If I got great legs and I don't have feet for them to walk on, it's going to be a great hindrance. Okay? I don't really think I have great legs. I'm just trying to jar you, shake you up. Okay? They're not bad. <laughs> okay. But without feet, we can't walk on our legs very well. Amen? Every part of the body is important. You are important to God. And, and he spoke to Jeremiah. He prophesied to Jeremiah 
that he knew him, he formed him, he created him, and God doesn't create anything that's not perfect. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. God spoke over you. He prophesied over you. Yes. It wasn't just Jeremiah. The Word of God tells us no scriptures for private interpretation. That's right. You have to understand how vital and how important you are to God and to His kingdom. He gifted you and He equipped you for the works of service that He has for you to do. Amen. What's the greatest? What's the greatest calling in life on this planet as a believer? What's the greatest calling? The greatest calling is to share the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because when that happens, someone is born again and it begins to change everything in their life and begins them on a journey in a relationship to the Heavenly Father. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. The greatest gift is the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Think of that treasure God has placed inside you and I. And we have to share it. We have to release it. We have to go and tell somebody. Amen? Amen. In Psalm 139, verse 13, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. You see, the devil has lied to us. The world system has lied to us and told us we're not good enough. Other people have spoken things over us telling us that we can't do it, that we can't overcome, that we're not good enough to receive God's love. We have to put every lie of the enemy out of our minds. We have to renew our minds with the Word of God according to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We have to renew our minds about what God says about us. God formed us. God made us. God thinks great thoughts about us. He's planned out a life for us. Has anybody ever made a mistake? Yes. Made a bad choice? Yes. We've all made bad choices. But God will redeem us, if we, redeem our bad choices if we will trust Him, if we will give them to Him, if we will repent of our bad choices and follow after Him, He will redeem. Yes. Okay. He will redeem. Yes. Yeah. He's, not, <clears throat> He's not looking for ways to keep people out of heaven. Right. He's not looking for ways to punish us. Yeah. He's looking for ways to bless us. Amen. God puts up fences not for us to get out, but for us to be protected. Amen. He wants to protect us. Amen. Hallelujah. I would like for us as a church family to make a, con a, a congregational confession. Amen. So I would like for you, if you know Jesus and you love Him, I would like for you to repeat this after me. You don't have to shout it. You can shout it if you want to. Loud enough for you to hear it with your own ears. Amen. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, not just what a preacher gets up and preaches to you, but your own mouth declaring God's Word Amen. brings faith. Amen. Your own self speaking the Word of God, agreeing with God, what God said about you, causes faith to come. When you read the Word of God out loud, faith.
faith comes. When you hear someone preaching it, faith comes. Amen? Amen? So I want you to read, uh, repeat this with me. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You have to really get it down in your soul how much God values you. That's right. You have to get it down in your soul and in your spirit how much God values you. How important you are. How special each and every one of us are to Him. Amen. See, because until we know that, the enemy will constantly speak lies to us and will derail us from walking in the blessing of God. God is not with, the word of God tells us, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Yeah. Tommy was saying it the other day, we receive healing through righteousness. Through the gift of righteousness, when we know we're made righteous, we receive the gift of healing. We receive the gift of every blessing of God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, the book of James says. And understanding our righteousness, understanding that our sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ, and we learn how to walk in holiness as we have been made righteous, we learn how to walk in holiness, which means we uh, hate sin and we love God. We hate the things that bring destruction to our lives and we walk after God because we see how much He loves us. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each one of us has destiny and purpose that God has planned for us. Yes. Yes. And like Robert said in Sunday school, it's only us that stops us. The devil can't stop you. Amen. I want to say that again, and I want it to go into your mind. I want it to go into your heart. The devil can't stop you. He was defeated when Jesus Christ went to the cross. Now we just have to take that victory that was purchased for us. We have to take it. We have to understand God loves you and he loves every person on this planet yes. sinner and saint he loves them he wants to redeem every one that has ever been born on this planet and you and I have the key for many souls you and I have the key for many souls just to walk out our daily Christian life with our eyes open with our ears open Looking and seeing who God places around us. Amen. And I've, 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 you know, and I've repented of it, but I've spoiled and wasted so many good chances because I'm so busy doing other things. And there's nothing more valuable to God on this planet than the people that live here. Nothing more valuable to Him. Not all the business deals, not all the things we can build, not all the people we can teach, which teaching's a good thing, all these things are good, but the point is, the most precious thing to God in this planet are you and I, are the souls that are born into this earth. Amen. 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 Reflecting His glory. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to reflect His glory. I was at a pastor's meeting on Thursday morning and the gentleman that was uh, sponsoring that pastor's meeting played a little video of another pastor speaking, talking about our life and seeing people saved and helping them become disciples. Does anybody get freaked out when you hear the word discipleship? Okay, discipleship just means walking together with someone and sharing life with them. Jesus and his disciples, they followed him, and he saw what they did, and he was teaching them to repeat what he did, basically. Amen? Amen. Just walking and doing life together. And this pastor on this video said, 
The church has had it all wrong. We think we got to bring people in. They got we got to get them saved, and then they got to go to discipleship 101, new member 101, 102, 103. They got to go through all this stuff before they can go share Jesus. <laughs> your testimony is your testimony. Your testimony is powerful. And he, he brought this example in Scripture, in uh, the Gospels, where, you remember the, the Gadarene demoniac? He was out among the tombs, he was naked, he was cutting himself with sharp stones, with sharp rocks. He was bound, they would bind him up because he was, he was crazy, he was demon-possessed. No one could bind him up. They would put chains on him and he would break them because of the power of all the demons that were living inside of him. But Jesus came to town. Jesus came to town and set this man free, delivered him from the demonic infiltration in his body, in his soul. Jesus delivered him. So the, the man reappeared after, I'm just kind of recapping the story real quick. The man reappeared, and he was clothed in his right mind, and he said, Jesus, let me come and follow after you. Yes. Let, basically, let me be one of your disciples. Jesus said, go to your town and tell them the good things the Lord has done for you. He didn't say, yeah, you, you have to follow me for a while. I'm going to have to straighten you out, dude. You are messed up. No, he said, go and tell them what I have done for you. Amen. Personal testimony. Amen. So when Jesus and the disciples came back to that region, there was 4,000 men showed up. Amen. And who told them? The demoniac told them there was 4,000 men that showed up when Jesus came back to that region to come and hear about, and hear this guy who had set this demoniac free. He didn't have to go to Bible school. He didn't have to go to a New Believers class, 102, 202, 302, whatever, 02. <laughs> He just had to go and share what Jesus did for him. Jesus is our deliverer. Yeah. Amen. We've complicated the gospel. We just need to share what Jesus does for us. Amen. Us messed up, broken people, Jesus cleansed us from our sins. Yes. He is healing us. He is bringing us into perfection through the renewing of our mind with His Word. Jesus said in John, My words are spirit and they are life. I'm going to give you a, a testimony real quick for myself. Okay, I'm going to pick on myself. Okay, A few weeks ago, I was the enemy was attacking me in my mind. And I was depressed. And this was on a Sunday morning. Early in the morning when I was seeking the Lord. And my mind was troubled, being bombarded and attacked. And I said, God, I got to break. I, gotta, I need your help. I need to break free from this. I didn't say because I got to go minister to your people. I said, I need to be free from this. Amen. Amen. I need to be free from this. And he led me in my heart. I didn't hear with my ears. I heard it in my heart. Open the Psalms and start reading them out loud. So I went into Psalms, I believe I started in verse 25, and I read like 10 Psalms and didn't stop. And just by reading His Word out loud where I could hear it, I wasn't screaming it, I was in my study at home, and I was just reading in a normal voice. And by the time I finished those 10 chapters, I, every oppression that was coming against me, all the thoughts that were bombarding me, all the enemy's lies, all the things that... I got a list of that I need to get done this week. It all just vanished and the peace of God came on me. Amen? Wow. Reading the Word 
His words are spirit and life to us. You know, we want God a lot of times to fix everything else around us when it's us that needs to be fixed. That's right. If we understand and we start to get God's perspective, if we start to get God's promises inside us, knowing that He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. If you're His child, He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. If you feel like God's far away, you just need to remember this verse. In Romans, he says, if you will draw, it's quoted from the Old Testament, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Yes. He never leaves us. We just get our minds and our hearts so cluttered with the garbage of this world that we're disconnected from him in our soul. He hasn't left us. Don't you love to be with the one who loves to be with you? Right. What does that take? Time, relationship. He just wants to be our Abba, our Daddy. How much time do we spend with Daddy? Go with me to Philippians 2. Got it, Isaac. Philippians 2, we want to look at verse 12. Dearest friends, you are always so careful to follow my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, you must be even more careful to put into action God's saving work in your lives. Obey God with deep reverence and fear. Hallelujah. Verse 13. For God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey Him and the power to do what pleases Him. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Hallelujah. So that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain. In other words, he said, I'm going to be proud, I'm going to be excited that I up with you and kept speaking the word of God into you. Amen? That you continued in the faith. But I want to go back to verse 13. I want everybody to get verse 13 deep down in your spirit, in your mind. For God is working in you. Amen. For God is working in you. See, God doesn't ask us to do things and not give us the ability to carry it out. Amen. He's put inside you and me His desire but we have to yield to that desire. We have to yield to His will. Amen? Amen. For God is working in you. Everybody say it with me. For God is working in me. God is working in me. You means me. When He's talking to you, He's talking to me. You've got to put yourself, you've got to put your name in there. For God is working in Kevin, giving Kevin the desire to obey Him and the power to do what pleases Him. Amen. you got to put your own name in that verse. you got to read the Word of God like it's personally to you, because it is. Amen. It is. See, God is working in Job. God is working in Zoe. God is working in Sherry. God is working in Nora. Hallelujah. He's working in every one of us. I'm telling you, if you will start reading the Bible and putting your name in where it says you, me, us, he's talking to the body of Christ, but we have to personalize it. It will change your world. It will start to reshape and refashion your mind to the mind of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we believe this promise of the Word of God? Yes. 
We have to believe the promises. It is our anchor. The book of Hebrews says the promises of God are the anchor of our soul. So that when the enemy comes and lies to us, we can't be shaken because we know what the promise of God says. But if we spend all of our time on other things, when the enemy attacks, we get confused and we lose our focus. We have to have focus on here because the word is dwelling inside us. We're feeding on it. We're reading it. We're listening to it. You know, in this day and age, with smartphones, we got no excuse. You can download multiple Bible apps and you can let the Word of God play to you all the time. Right. And you don't, you don't even have to be fully listening to it. And what I mean by that is you can play it and before you hit the play button, you say, Holy Spirit, I thank you for downloading your words into my heart. Well, I'm doing something that I have to do. You know what I do most of the time when I mow my lawn? I put my headset on or my buds and I take my Bible app on and I'll play the Bible while I'm mowing the lawn. Now, mowing the lawn doesn't take that much mental focus, so I can listen pretty, pretty good in that. But there are other chores that we have to do every day. We could be letting the Word of God play in the background. Some of y'all go to work and you have music playing in the background on your computer or in your office when you're working. Has anybody ever done that? I used to do it all the time. I just put the Bible app on. Just don't blare it out because unless your boss is a Christian and says, hey, go for it. But just let that play in the background. Let the Word of God get inside your spirit, inside your head. It'll change. It'll renew. It'll bring life. He said, my words are spirit and they are life. Amen? Amen? One more verse. We're going to go back to one from a couple weeks ago. Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 14. Jesus is talking to the people. He's talking to those who gathered around to hear Him. He said, You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Jesus told them, You are the light of the world. Why were they the light of the world? Because God created them. These people weren't even born again yet, but Jesus was laying out the principles that they should walk in because they were following after Him. They were seeking the Father through Him. And now we're born again. And Jesus said, you are the light of the world. This message applies to us. You know all the words in red that Jesus said? They apply to us. We can take them. He didn't say... Uh, you are the light of the world, but not Chad. He, he did too many bad sins before he got saved. So he just kind of, he's, nee. no, no, no. We are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Yes. Yes. Every one of us who claim the name of Jesus Christ, we're the light of the world. Yes. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not overtake it. That's right. Amen? First John. Everybody say it with me. I am, I am the light of the world. Jesus is living in me. And I'm going to reflect His glory. Amen. Worship team, come on up. Hallelujah. As they're coming up, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you in the fact that God loves you. I want to encourage you in the fact that God has a plan for your life. He has already developed steps for you to walk in. All of the goodness and the treasures of God. Anybody ever been on a treasure hunt before? All of the goodness and the treasures of God are hidden for us, not from us. So we have to search them out. He said, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you to draw near to God. I want to encourage you to make some special time 
every day for the Father. Amen. It won't just happen. I mean, it, it's going to be very rare that, that time just appears and you go, oh, this is my time. It just appeared and I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to read His Word. I'm going to pray. We have to redeem the time. We have to say, God, you're so important to me. I'm dedicating time to you. Just like I said, relationship, relationships don't just happen. Well, let me rephrase that. Relationships can just happen, but for you to maintain them and for them to grow deeper and intimate, you got to spend time on it. you got to want to be with the one you're with. The Holy Spirit loves to be loved. Jesus loves to talk to you. The Father loves to wrap His arms around you. But we have to put ourselves in that place. Time with Him. And coming to church on Sunday morning is a great way for us to get it established in our hearts that we come together and as a family we worship Him together. But you have to develop that on your own in your own personal life. Robert was showing two examples today on the screen. I caught this part also. Johnny Erickson taught a quadriplegic, right? And what's the other guy's name? Nick Fulgen? Nick. I'll just say Nick. Okay? A guy named Nick who's got no no arms, no legs. Both of them have worldwide ministries to minister to people the gospel of Jesus Christ and to help them realize they can overcome their physical disabilities. Amen? Amen? So what's our excuse? God has placed inside you and me so many good gifts. And the greatest gift is His gift of eternal life. He just wants us to share it. He wants us to share that great message of redemption, of forgiveness, of relationship with the Father.